body of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey, folks. Happy holidays and good evening and welcome to Families and Monsters Personal Reports where I narrate, discuss some of the uh, cryptid and unexplained sightings and uh, encounters submitted to Phantoms of Monsters and the Phantoms of Monsters 14 research team. So thanks for joining me. Uh, this channel is made possible by you clicking on the subscribe and like button and uh, by you sharing our programming. Super chat and super thanks donations are always appreciated. And the uh, you can click the dollar icon, which is uh, located under the chat box. As well, the Buy Me a Coffee link and banner are also shown, so thanks for your consideration. I want to welcome all new members to the channel as well as uh, first-timers time first -timers in the chat. If you're listening to me for the first time, please like and subscribe to the channel. Set your notifications and bell icon so you receive word when new presentations are going live or are being posted to the channel. Now, if you're in the, if you're in the chat and have a question, Please use all chat, um, all caps, and I'll try to get to each and every one of them after the presentation. What I'll do is I'll let you know when I'm getting to the last account, and you can start to post your questions. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to be opening the, the Pennsylvania and Maryland case files as far as the um the dogman or upright canine or whatever you want to call these things that phenomena uh beginning with the original reports and accounts i have <clears throat> investigated these cases and some of which were reported since butch passed uh plan to periodically present some of our cases along with newer inquiries uh like what we've done with the uh, chicago wing humanoid phenomena so uh, just sit back, listen to the uh, the sightings and encounters. If you have questions, again, feel free to post them in the live chat, and I'll do my best to answer each one of them. So um, this is a case I received this past, early, this late this past summer, and uh, I recently visited the location where a law enforcement officer living in Howard County, Maryland, contacted me about a frightening cryptid encounter encounter, cryptid canine encounter that he had in his home in early 2021. Now, the original report was as follows. I was a Baltimore Police Department detective, and at the time, in early 2021, I worked directly out of the Northern District in the city. Now, on the night of the que in question, I was in my office at home late at night in suburban Howard County, Maryland. I live alone. I often would find myself unable to sleep at night, so I would head to my office to work. Uh, that night, I was going through a case file that I was working on. Then I heard an unusual sound. It was just different enough from anything I would used to hearing around the house, and then it caught my attention. Not to mention it was around 2 o'clock in the morning. It sounded like something heavy was hitting the ground. It was coming from the yard behind the house. I stood up and cocked my head to the side to try to pinpoint the exact location. But as I listened closer, I realized that it sounded like it might be much closer to the house, like right outside the kitchen in the back. So I stepped away from my desk and I moved towards my office door. Now, my office was just down the hall from the kitchen, so I opened the door slowly and stepped out to investigate. But first, I listened again to make sure I was correct in the direction where it was coming from. Sure enough, I heard it again from the area outside the kitchen. I started to make my way down the hallway, and as I got closer, the noise got louder. I reached the kitchen, and I looked towards the door. 
the noise had gone silent, almost like whatever was making a noise knew I was listening to it. I slowly and very quietly opened the door to the outside. And when I did, I was shocked at what I was looking at. Standing on the patio, moving around and making the noise was a creature unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was about seven foot tall and totally covered in black and reddish brown fur. It had a long snout with teeth protruding at odd angles. The creature turned towards me when the door opened, almost like it instinctively knew I was there. I was totally quiet when I opened the door. The creature quickly focused on me and lunged towards me, hissing. I quickly stepped back inside and shut the door. I had to think fast to determine a suitable plan of action. I decided to head back to my office where I hoped to watch it undetected from my office window. I proceeded to look through the window, but it wasn't long before I heard the creature breaking into the house through the kitchen door. I pulled out my gun and I aimed it down the hallway. As I slowly opened the office door, I could hear but not see the creature in the kitchen. I listened as it was moving around with a lot of force and stepping heavily on the wooded floor. I could also hear it snorting as it moved around. It sounded like something out of a horror film. I thought that if I just stayed quiet, it might just leave, which would have been the optimal outcome. I listened to it for a while. Uh, it, I listened to it while it moved uh, in the kitchen, but then I heard it go into the dining room. I could hear glass breaking and furniture being shoved around. It seemed to be very angry. I finally opened my office door all the way and stepped out completely into the hallway. I slowly walked towards the dining room with my gun still raised. As soon as I got close, I peeked my head around the corner. It turned its head toward me and instantly started to growl. It had an angry look on its face with a human-like expression. I'd sensed that it wanted to tear me apart right there, but instead of rushing and attacking me, it suddenly went silent again. It quickly rushed back to the kitchen and hurled itself out through the back door. Now, I didn't know what to think at that point. On one hand, I was relieved that it had left, but at the same time, I somehow felt concern that it may return at some point. I decided then and there that I would find out more about this creature. My confusion and fear turned into anger. I wanted to know who or what this thing was and why it had come into my house. Now, I've done a lot of research, mainly online, but it's been difficult to find anything that really matched what happened. I wondered why it came into the house and what it was looking for. The other descriptions online were generally similar. It was bipedal with pointed ears, large uh, yellow-tinged eyes, and canine-like teeth. It also had a very pungent sulfur-like odor that I can still smell in my memory. Now, my research led to your blog, and I'm contacting you. I have many questions that would like to talk. I still live in the same house, but I currently work for another local law enforcement department. I have not seen the creature since that night, but I instinctively know it still ruins my area. I wish to remain completely anonymous and discreet about my encounter. Now, I was able to contact the witness, and we discussed his predicament, of course, since she's in law enforcement, specific information had to remain confidential. So I'm in uh, many of the specific details as a result, and I uh, received his permission to post this report on the blog, but only after he read and approved it. Now, the general area where he lives is known for past Bigfoot activity. As far as the cryptic canine sightings are encountered, there have been historical reports of activity west of that location, mostly in Frederick County, Maryland. Now, the central Maryland Piedmont region has had an increase in unexplained cryptid sightings and reports in recent years. In fact, this incident was close to where I had my Bigfoot encounter in 1981. Now, I have been told of, po of possible cryptic canine sightings in the area, but the evidence, although anecdotal, has been sparse. I plan to follow up with the witness and investigate location shortly. So, on Saturday, October 14th of this year, year i traveled to the location which is near clarksville in howard county maryland 
It's a semi-rural location adjacent to the Middle Patuxent Environmental Area, which is a preserved parkland with nature trails and a variety of plants and wildlife. The weather was very wet with continuous rain. I did manage to examine the area where the witness had stated he heard the strange noises over the past two years since his encounter. He does believe that the creature still inhabits the area. I have not received any indication from any other witnesses that this creature currently exists. Now, the witness showed me several photographs of the damage created by this creature. Now, I wasn't given permission to use or post. I will state that there was an extensive amount of broken glass in the kitchen and dining room depicted in the photos. There were also claw marks that were visible on the dining room table and the kitchen door. Also on the uh, linoleum countertop in the kitchen. Uh, I will continue to monitor this location, provide any further updates. Now, I, I am keeping in contact with this witness. Hopefully, I'll get permission to post the uh, photographs at some point, but I don't know when or how that'll happen. So uh, until then, we're just going to keep it fresh in my mind and uh, hope for the best that he uh, releases it. But uh, quite frankly, that's probably one of maybe three cases where a, um, a cryptic canine has gone into a location uh, that, you know, that had been reported to me. The other two were nearly as dramatic as this one. So uh, this is this is interesting. Uh, why I came in, there, I, I haven't been able to figure out. So uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again to him, but we'll see. <laughs> now, this next one, um, a Northeast Pennsylvania man recalls a bizarre incident with a massive bipedal cryptid canine. It had killed several guard dogs and was supposed to be tracked and killed by state police. Now, I was told by a friend that uh, you investigate strange canine sightings in Pennsylvania. I live in the northeastern part of the state in rural Monroe County in the Poconos. I have a bipedal wolf account. This occurred on September 3rd, 1975. I now own the property and still live there. Now, my father and I were traveling in our family station wagon on a dirt road on our property. When we first saw this creature, it had come out of the heavy woods and crossed the road while on all fours. We stopped the car and watched it. When it reached the north boundary of our field, it stood up on its hind legs. It tried to hide between two mulberry trees. It headed, its head touched the branch that was approximately 12 feet off the ground. My father would later measure its height. It then ran, dropping down on all fours. It was running at an unbelievable speed. It covered 100 plus yards and ran out of the southern boundary of our field into the road directly in front of us. From its nose to the tip of its tail, it covered the country road from shoulder to shoulder, approximately 18 feet. Its left shoulder was about one foot above the center of the hood of our car. When measured, it was three feet off the ground, putting its left shoulder at approximately four foot high. As it ran in front of us crossing the road, it turned its head towards us and snarled, showing all its teeth, including the canines, were at least six inches long. It had huge amber eyes that just looked plain evil. Now, the neighbor who owned the woods where the creature had come out of had about 12 guard dogs. He lived alone. We called him Mr. Hermit. And... Uh, and he owned about 100 acres, which included several long retired state quarry holes that were all filled with clear blue water and huge fish. The woods were also full of deer. Our newly built home was about 50 yards west of where it ran across the road. Now, a few nights after this incident, at about 1 a.m. in the morning, all hell broke loose. We could hear the neighbor's guard dogs fighting, madly yelping, and being slaughtered. Mr. Herman opened with a 12-gauge and kept firing. We would find out later that nine of his 12 guard dogs were killed. Our area was under Pennsylvania State Police jurisdiction. There's no local sheriff or police force. Several troopers showed up that night. 
Then at daybreak, a tactical team arrived in a helicopter, which landed in our field. My father worked the third shift at the time at Ingersoll Rand and was just getting home. My father immediately walked up to Mr. Hermit's property. He crossed our field and then directly up his driveway. The state police refused to let him go any further. My mother was so scared of the ordeal that we had heard the previous night, so she decided to keep us home from school. Now, shortly after I saw my father disappear up Mr. Hermit's driveway, small arms fire erupted. We're all looking out our kitchen window in anticipation of the results. The state police helicopter took off and hovered over Mr. Hermit's property. It then dipped very low and then lifted something huge wrapped in a tarp with a cargo net around it. Now, my father soon returned and told us that the state police told him that he was to forget about what he saw. The barracks commander stopped in on his way out to reinforce this. He pestered my father to tell us what it, it was they shot. Excuse me. It, we pestered my father to tell us what was shot and killed. This was the only time I'd ever seen fear in his eyes. All he said was that they saw that he saw them. They shoot and kill at, ex, at an extremely large wolf. Excuse me. All he said was he saw them shoot and kill an extremely large wolf. He never spoke of the incident again, nor would he acknowledge my inquiries about it. I eavesdropped on him and my mother talking about it after we kids were supposed to be asleep. He said there were nine dead guard dogs and that the 12-gauge shotgun shells were everywhere. By the next night, there was a loaded 12-gauge shotgun at every entrance door with double-eyed buckshot. My mom had a new handgun ready. My father got off the night shift very soon after this incident. There had been no other incidents with bipedal wolves in our area. Um, now, I did inform the witness that the Pocono area is still well known for bipedal, bipedal canine sightings. Uh, I reported several of those of the past decade. Um, that area around Wilkesbury, Scranton, the rural areas around it, do have a fair amount of sightings, so um, you know, and I still get them occasionally. So, uh, but this one's pretty. This one was pretty interesting. So this next one was fairly recent, uh, a couple months ago, actually, um, in uh, in August. A Hagerstown, Maryland couple was driving south on Sharpsburg Pike, about three miles north of the Antietam National Battlefield, where they observed nut right upright cryptid canine approaching the highway. Now, the witness stated, my wife and I witnessed a dogman-looking creature, possibly a dueo, Monday night, uh, August 7th, 2023, while driving northbound on Route 65 with Sharpsburg Pike, south of Rockland Drive, just south of Hagerstown, Maryland, at approximately 2,200 hours Eastern Standard Time. Now, I will tell you, I don't think I have it listed here, but that um, that location on the left where this creature came from is where the um, is the uh, Maryland State Correctional Facility in Hagerstown. That's where it's located at. Um, we had just left left the AC and T Travel Center that's located at the intersection of Route 65 and Lappins Road after eating dinner there. It was dark out with only light illumination. Being that from the only light illumination being that from my own headlights, some street lights and headlights from single approaching cars. Now, at the initial time of the witnessing of the creature, the approaching car was approximately 500 foot in front of us. I was driving and my wife was in the front passenger seat. As we were approaching Rockland Drive, something immediately caught my attention to my left peripheral. When I looked over, I saw what appeared to be a dogman-like creature running at a super fast pace right towards the road from an open field. I quickly realized that if I maintain my own, maintain my own driving speed, I might actually hit it if it continued coming across the road. So I immediately came, um, came down pretty hard on the brakes. As it got close to the road, my headlights put some limited illumination on the creature. 
but it never got closer than approximately 25 to 50 feet from it. As soon as I hit my brakes, my wife exclaimed, what the hell is that? As I got up by the road, an approaching car started to make it hard to see due to its headlight, and we lost sight of it, never to be seen again once the car passed us. We don't know if the creature crossed behind the passing car or not, as we never witnessed it come onto the road. As crazy as it sounds, I don't know if it may have hurtled our vehicles or we didn't see it do that or what, but with its speed and build, I would have to say that it very well may have had the ability to do that. Uh, but obviously, I, I can't say for certain. So uh, we were both very shaken by what we had just witnessed. Now, my wife and I described our accounts, what we witnessed very similarly. Um, it was running upright on two legs, eastbound from my left to my right, from an open field directly towards the road. It had dog-like legs, V-shaped with the knees almost forward, uh, most forward, traveling at an estimated 30 to 35 mile an hour. I've never seen on two legs run so fast in my life. Its legs were significantly smaller in proportion to the upper body. It was kind of narrow at the waist, and its body got larger, wider, and bulkier through the torso from above the waist up to the shoulders, being the largest in the chest area. Its head was rounded with two upright pointed ears. It was completely black in color and appeared to be fully covered in fur or hair except around the face or snout area. Neither of us is super confident of seeing a tail as we both were focused on other aspects of its build. Now, all I can say is that my absolute first thought when seeing it, I immediately recognize as being a werewolf, dog man looking creature, and they typically have been described as having a large, bushy tail. Now, my wife said that the very first thing that caught her focus was how, it, how fast it was running in the shape and look of its head. She said, she said that uh, she then took notice of its uniquely shaped legs. Now, she's not super familiar with the cryptid field, but when I showed her several uh, different artists' renditions of what a werewolf doll man looked like, she absolutely agreed that they were extremely like what she had seen. I also agreed that this is what I witnessed as well. So once we got home and to, uh, continued to discuss the encounter, I began thinking the whole thing through through to try and debunk it or come up with some type of logical explanation as to how this thing had been just an illusion, maybe whatever you want to call it. I have trans traversed this road in both directions probably well over 100 times in both day and night settings over the years. Clearly never having anything anywhere close to this experience that, you know, ever before. So I kept picturing in my head the area in which we witnessed this. Now, for the life of me, I was nearly certain that there was not a single thing in that field that could have possibly reflected off any light, structure, fence, wall, etc., to create a shadow effect. We drove back to the area uh, later as I wanted to take, a, take the time to see if we could um, come up with some odd shadow effect that had been created by headlights of a car or approaching car. We went back in the daylight and again at night and confirmed that the field was wide open. There was absolutely nothing for light to reflect off of. We recreated the event as I drove in the same direction at the same location with ongoing traffic, and it was not able to reproduce a single aspect of what we witnessed. This has left both my wife and I to conclude and be convinced that what we had witnessed was real, a physical creature. And while doing some light online research and possibly on possible similar sightings, I came across some articles about a creature named the Dwayo. It had been documented to have been seen in Gambrel State Park and all along the Katakan Mountains between Frederick Woolsville and Thurmont, including in the Cunningham State uh, Cunningham Falls State Park, where two rangers claimed to have witnessed the creature. Now, after reading the creature's description from the witnessed accounts, I had my wife read them for herself, and at this point, it's our belief that this is the very creature that we witnessed that night. So, he got back to me again, and uh, this is right before I talked to him, and, and stated that throughout this particular day of our encounter, beginning in the mid-afternoon hours, there was a very significant outbreak of severe weather that occurred in this region that continued into the early evening hours. 
This included torrential downpours over 70 mile per hour winds, large hail and frequent lightning. There were successful severe cells that came through in waves throughout the several hour time frame. The likes of this um, weather event hadn't been seen in this region for over 10 years. However, at the time of the encounter, uh, there were no storms in the area. It was raining and there was no wind in any degree whatsoever. It was a very peaceful night at this point, and the last storm had passed through the area a few hours prior. To, and I do remember that night because uh, a tornado apparently touched down in Westminster, which is east of the location. Uh, it could have been possible that the creature had fled the mountainous area to seek safety as there had been very significant tree falls along those mountains and surrounding areas during those uh, weather events. And it was on its way to returning to its home when it came, when we came upon it with question mark. As the crows fly, as they say, the nearest mountain is approximately 10 miles away. As fast as this creature was witnessed running, it would only take a relatively short time for it to get back into the dense woods of that mountain range from which it had been witnessed in the past. Now, this was the direction in which it was traveling when we had our encounter. No way of knowing for sure was just a thought. And uh, then I interviewed the witness and I can confirm the statements that were given to me personally and what was contained in the report. Um, so um, anyway, I, I did talk about the DeWayo sightings, earlier sightings and the history behind it. Uh, for those, if you're not familiar with it, Dueyo is a, um, it's spelled D-W-A-Y-Y-O. Uh, it's spelled a bunch of different ways, actually. It was a moniker given to an upright cryptid canines first described by 19th century German farmers, mostly Pennsylvania Dutch high-order Mennonites, who had moved southwest into western Maryland from their original location in Lancaster and New York counties, Pennsylvania. Now, their descriptions were like the old country interpretations of the werewolves that were part of the uh, Central European culture and lore. I found the witnesses to be very forthright and honest. Um, there had been a recent spat of cryptic canine sighting reports throughout the Maryland Piedmont along the uh, Susquehanna River near the Chesapeake Bay and parts of the Appalachian Range. Um, our team is actively investigating these incidents and any updates will be presented to the public uh, on the blog, possibly here on the, on, on the radio. So we'll see what happens. So I have to say that, that was a very detailed report. Excuse me. And um, unfortunately we don't get them like that a lot, but the way you know the way that he sounded and the way his wife sounded they definitely saw something it scared the living hell out of them so uh and i will say now this is this is these are this is the third sighting we've had in the past two years in the areas of the piedmont which are just east of the uh the appalachian mountains or the allegheny mountains or whatever range you want to call that that run through Maryland. Now, we we also suspect that there are some cryptic canine uh, uh, being seen along the Susquehanna River on the Cecil County and Harper County side, as far south of where it goes into the Chesapeake, which is around Havard Grace. So, um, yeah, uh, and their their sightings are up in Pennsylvania too, along the the river. So. Uh, Maybe we'll get some more, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, this next account. A South Central Pennsylvania waste hauler recently observed an unknown cow-sized hyena-like cryptid at approximately 3 a.m. during his route near Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Now, I say recent. It was, um, it was around 3 a.m. July 14, 2020. He stated, I had my first close cryptid sighting. I'm writing to you and the community to see if anyone else has seen or heard anything the likes of what I saw today. Now, I'm a waste hauler, trash man. I drive, I start my days very early every day. And it, it's interesting. The, the, the same guy actually drives down where I live at and empties 
are trash bins as well. So um, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Anyway, so most of my workday takes place in the wee hours of the day. I live in South Central Pennsylvania and have resided there nearly my, home, my whole life. My place of employment is in the uh, college town of Shippensburg. And my job is an outlying area of Shippensburg. Uh, a lot of these areas are surrounded by vast farmlands and open fields. Well, this morning, while traveling to the start of my route, I turned down one of the many roads surrounded by fields. <clears throat> it was a half crescent moon, so there was plenty of light to see in the darkness. As I turned around, I saw what looked like a cow lying in the open field. But this field had no fences or wire to keep livestock in. And it was only one. I found that very odd as I'm looking at the broad shoulders of what I thought was a cow. So I broke out my high power mag light to brighten up what I was looking at. When my beam hit this animal, it rose up from the ground in a slow lumbering and purposeful, purse, purposeful action. As it came up on all fours, the creature stood about five to six feet tall at its shoulder blades. Uh, my truck, in my truck, I'm elevated and I sit about that high from the ground. So the creature was about 30 feet from me. And I know if I stood toe to toe with it, its head would be taller than me. And I'm six foot. Now at this moment, the back of this creature also was still facing me. It then turned its head into my light and the lens glared off its eyes and they were, they were uh, yellow green in color. The eyes facing forward. This was a predatory creature, not a cow. <laughs> At that moment, heat and cold washed over my body, and I feel genuine life-threatening fear take over. I don't move. Sitting in the middle of the road, knowing I'm low on the pecking order of the food chain at this moment, it continues to measure me for what it, I felt forever, and it suddenly turned its head and tore off faster than I could know. My pathetic guess is about 30 to 40 mile an hour as it darted away. And after all this, the only thing I could think of was that it was some sort of giant hyena. The most terrifying real life creature I've ever witnessed, and it was gone so fast. It's been on mine all day, and I had to share this experience. I always listened to your show and others and heard about people and their sightings feeling away, wishing for my spirit experience to occur and as of this morning i wish i i didn't get my turn not like that not feeling so vulnerable like it was starting at a next the excuse me, like it was starting or staring at its next meal i hope there are others that may have seen or heard of what i saw that uh in that light uh I'm sorry about this. My uh, got real fuzzy looking. Uh, I work in darkness all the time. Now I'm looking over my shoulder. Anyway, well, this sighting is interesting because uh, now that's Shippensburg. That's about 20 miles from me. We had another sighting of something similar to that in New Oxford, Pennsylvania, which is like maybe another 12 miles south of that. Um, we did get a, a, a sketch of it, a description. It, it looks somewhat different, but we don't know what it was. Now, Tim Renner looked at it. He couldn't tell what it was. Uh, the description that we got, <clears throat> we kind of figured it was probably some type of canine. It had a lot of size to it. But honestly, the way the person described it, you could distinct, you could mistaken it for a cow actually, because the body was that wide looking. So I don't know if it's the same thing or we've got these things running around the area that are similar to this, but, um, anyway, <laughs> that, uh, I don't know what it was, but like I said, if anything else keeps comes up, we will definitely report on it. Now th this report was from Butch. And he received a telephone report of a large, aggressive, upright canine uh, that occurred in Rothrock State Park in Center County, Pennsylvania. 
Uh, Butch was at the site the next day, which was March 31st, 2019, and then found the following account. Uh, of course, this uh, incident occurred in what we've been calling, we're calling the Lake and Loop, which is in central Pennsylvania. Uh, he had, now this is what Butch had posted, uh, by Peter report, March 30th, 2019. First case of aggression reported by a bipedal canine in Pennsylvania. Location, Center County, Pennsylvania, Rothrock State Forest. Now, three couples hiking in the Rothrock State Forest just outside of Pine Grove Mills, Pennsylvania, encountered a bipedal canine. The couples state that between 1 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. while hiking, a large wolf-like creature stepped out of the wooded area near a small clearing. The creature was staring at the group, and when a female member of the party started screaming, the creature took two or three steps forward towards the group, baring its teeth and growling. All witnesses agree it seemed the, the screaming set it off and to go into that aggressive movement in the direction of the group. Now, the hikers left the area immediately running for their lives, as they, as they put it, to the investigator. Now... The description by all members of the group states that the creature was between 8 and 10 foot tall, large wolf head, yellow eyes, long muscular arms, massive body build, and strange looking legs. Investigators from uh, UFO Research Center, Pennsylvania, and Famous Monsters 14 Research Team met with a witness and viewed the area sighting, but no evidence was found. They were very cooperative, and the descriptions matched. Now, The reason this these these couples were at Rothrock State Forest was that the individual who made the report to us worked for the state. In other words, he was part of uh, some of the uh, actual location field work and maintenance and manicuring and all that. <clears throat> and they had just put in a uh, a new trail, and. He, he and the, his couples and his wife walked that trail that, cause since it was new, and that's where this thing was. What wasn't mentioned in the report and what we later found out is when they ran towards the park lot and got to their car, this thing was standing there. He had made, going a whole way around, doubled back, and was standing there by the car. Of course, they stopped, and they were just watching it, and then it turned and took off. Uh, they were a bit apprehensive about going to the car, hoping this thing wouldn't jump out at them, but um, it didn't. So um, anyway, that uh, I don't know what this was. Of course, it, it was probably an upright canine. Um, the, uh, the gentleman didn't really want to say what it thought it was, um, but he did work for the state, and of course, we had to keep all the – uh, information about him confidential. And quite frankly, this is not the first state employee to tell us anything or mention to us about seeing these upright canines or quad quadrupeds. Some that look like hyenas. We've had at least four. Um, some of them are game commission people as well. So um, these things are out there. There's no doubt about it. And um, quite frankly, we're uh we don't know what to think about it, but, you know, of course, we still get the reports. Uh, I think Butch and I looked into about 23 reports between 2013 and until the time he passed, which was uh, 2021. So, or beginning of 2022. So, um, but we're still getting reports. So, uh, now here's the last, the last, uh, uh, case file. Now, I took this one. This was reported to me at the time in uh, 2016. Um, the witness states I was deer hunting just north of Tuscarora State Forest. This was on Saturday, December 3rd, 2016. I have a tree stand on the edge of a large field owned by a friend. Now, I had been hunting here for almost 20 years and had begged several deer at this location. I saw something that early morning, I'm not sure how to explain. It was about 7, 10 a.m. and just turning light. I noticed a few deer in the distance running towards the state forest. 
I looked through my scope and saw what I thought were two coyotes following the deer. But these coyotes didn't look quite right. They were larger, almost like wolves. About 15 minutes later, I was watching a buck about 600 yards south of me in an open field when it bolted towards the trees. Then I saw a large dog-like animal. It was slowly walking or stalking, I'm not sure, but it was heading in my direction. I was upwind from it, and it noticed me. It soon noticed me in the tree stand. It stopped and looked at me for a few seconds, then started walking towards me again. It was about 100 yards or so from me, and I heard a growling. <clears throat> this was not a dog or a coyote. It reminded me of a wolf, but the back was arched and the head was huge. The fur was very dark and the legs were odd with spare, sparse hair. I thought about shooting it, but something told me not to. I was shaking as well. This animal really scared me. It once again stopped moving and looked at me for a few seconds. The face was that of a wolf, but the snout was shorter than any wolf foot I'd ever seen. It had steely eyes, almost like those of a human. Really weird. Something called its attention and it ran off towards the south. I stayed in my stand for another hour and didn't see anything during that time. When it did leave a stand, I was very cautious. I had no idea if it was in the area, and I re so I, but I did reach my car and left. I talked to a game commission officer later and reported the animal. He had actually gone into Tuscarora. Uh, in this, into the park and, and went to the ranger station. He said that there had been a few reports of large dogs, but that they were most likely coyotes. I told him that this was not a coyote, but he didn't seem to care. I talked to a guy at church who told me about your website and said I should contact you. I don't want to be too specific about the location because it's private land and belongs to a friend. Now, I, I contacted the witness by email, and he telephoned me that morning. Uh, he was obviously shaken up by the encounter. It was obvious on the phone. And the encounter was just north of Tuscarora State Forest in Perry County. Now, he answered a few questions and, and seemed to be very truthful. The arch back intrigued me. He mentioned hyena-like, a description I've heard before, and it never went bipedal while the witness observed it. So, um... These hyena quadrupeds, uh, these are what Butch and I are calling the dog man, basically. Um, the uprights were, were the upright canines, uh, or what are bipedal canines, which, which Butch called it. We're, we're, we're putting in an, an entirely different order. Uh, but these quadrupeds, uh, or what we're calling dog man, have called dog man. I'm still referring it to that. And most of these have that hyena look to it, that arch back. Uh, many times it's spotted, very similar to what the, the gentleman at um, at uh, French Creek mentioned two years ago, uh, Matt. Uh, he um, Now, that thing was upright, but it also had the spotted fur. So uh, I don't know what people are saying. Uh, but we continually get these hyenas like cryptid sightings. So um, I don't know what it is, but anyway, uh, there you go. So um, if you've got questions, I'm going to go ahead and take them now. So go ahead and post them. I think we had some, yeah, Robo 1776. Thanks again. Uh, Mortal Clown, thank you for your generous donation. Robo1776, again, he asked, uh, does it seem a dog man recognizes a human with a firearm? Does it react aggressive or retreat? They do seem to recognize the firearms. Uh, they aren't normally, they don't normally act aggressive. Uh, and in fact, we have heard others talk about uh, being, you know, and you've heard this with Bigfoot as well. There's some type of um, mind speak thing where it, it is, it kind of relaxes the, the 
the hunter or whoever has the gun and they just lower their, their weapon and back away. You know, we hear this with Bigfoot sightings all the time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not aggressive. The only, the only aggression that we really have noticed, uh, in any reports are the ones I mentioned earlier at Rothrock. So, um, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, so I thank you for that. And, uh, a lot of bright. Thanks for your, uh, your donation as well. Let me go back here and see if I can find some of the other questions. Okay. Joshua twelve twelve. I know Bigfoot reacts to a firearm and they retreat, but didn't hear of dog man. Good question. Yeah. Well, that just like I said, it, it does. Um, and, there, you know, I've never heard of any other cryptid sighting where they do that, like, you know, winged humanoids, mothman, or even anything else. But um, the dogman, the Bigfoot, they seem to know of weapons. So I think they've probably seen them, and they know what they can do. So uh, they do seem to react to it like that. Oh, let's see here. Uh, Sue G is a new member. Thank you for becoming a new member. Appreciate it very much. And she also gifted five uh, memberships. So I very much appreciate that. Uh, scroll down here. A lot of people in here tonight. Magnus. Thoughts on dog man or upright canine with pups and females? I've heard sparse reports. I have heard anecdotal reports, of course, of, of possible pups. But I don't think, for the most part, that these, these witnesses can get close enough to really see that. Um, now, of course, if it's a female and she's got the pups around her, I, you know, they might see them somewhat moving around her or such, but I don't, I really haven't gotten a report. I don't think Butch did either. Any, any observation or good observation of, of the, uh, the juveniles. So, uh, but of course they have to be there if they are indigenous, which I don't think they really are. I think there may be some possibilities that they could be in some degree. I think they're interdimensional beings, just like, um, just like the Bigfoot and other cryptids. Super Sars Rex. How often are dogmen reported to have human-like hands versus canine front paws? Uh, rarely. It's rare. Uh, most of the time, it's a, a creature that has uh, has somewhat like human hands, but of course they've got talons on them. Uh, I've never heard of one without talons, um, but uh, it's very rare. A lot of bright. Do they stalk people once they see you? Um, in some instances, the witnesses think that they do stalk them, but there's not really a lot of evidence pointing that way. I, I think when they do run across someone, they will watch them for a bit, but then take off, lose interest, or just try to get away from her to avoid trouble. Super Saurus Rex, have you received any reports of dog man or urban environments, towns, cities, et cetera? Small towns, um, but nothing nothing in a, a, a large urban area. Uh, but small towns, we do get them on the outskirts or in suburban areas. Um, but mostly, I, I'd say 90% of the sightings are in uh, very thick terrain, very rough terrain. Anything else, folks? Well, I want to thank each and all of you for coming in, uh, uh, for watching and chatting. Uh, if you donate, it's truly appreciated. Your support's what makes all this possible. Uh, please like, sub subscribe, and share. Uh, we got a quick one come in here, Sir Wolf. Let me get it up here real quick. Have you heard of a number of them 
together, not solo. Now, most of them are always just, just when they're running together, there may be two of them, like that one report, but it's mostly solitary creatures. Uh, Joshua 12, 12, you heard a dog man make a howling sound. They do make howling sounds according to some witnesses. Um, I have heard recordings that could have been these things, but, uh, unless we actually see something howling, I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, but they do howl. people do say they howl. So. How does uh, Mundio, Miss Highline, have you heard of any dog breeds that may be a match for a dog man? Uh, many times they are described as looking like huge German shepherds. Uh, that's the closest that we've gotten to any actual domestic dog breed. It's mostly always to do with a wolf or something similar to a wolf or, of course, a... Um, a hyena. So again, folks, thanks for coming in and uh, watching and chatting. Again, your donations are truly appreciated. If you have a sighting or encounter report that you'd like to be considered for the personal report show or post on the blog, feel free to email me at lawnstrickerfamsandmonsters.com. So again... I want to uh, say happy holidays to everyone. Happy New Year. I don't know about next Friday. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what kind of response I get. If there's enough response, I'll go ahead and do a show. But I'll let you know ahead of time. So, um, again, until we meet again, stay healthy and safe. Have a happy holiday. And uh, take care.